yes guys good evening good evening good evening how are we all doing hope we're doing good welcome back to the show tonight bless up to every one of you uh joining me this late hour i appreciate it guys thank you once again uh bear with me my eyes are all sore because i've got bloody bad hay fever all day and uh yeah my eyes are red raw but if i sneeze I do apologize. <laughs> uh, guys, don't forget before we start, hit the like button, hit the subscribe button, hit the share button, all that good stuff. I would appreciate it. Guys, we're on our way to, you know, on our way to five and a half thousand subs now. We're all what, about 90 odd people away. So if you've not subscribed yet, please think about subscribing. I would appreciate it. Don't forget to hit that like button straight away. We've got 100 people already in the house. So please go and smash that like button. I would really, really would appreciate it. Thank you very much. Uh, let's try and get to 100 likes as quick as we can tonight, please, guys. 100 likes as quick as we can. Um, yeah, we've got loads to talk about, obviously. Liverpool. Uh, Liverpool doing the worst performance you've seen in a Jurgen Klopp home team in quite some time. At home to Atlanta, losing 3-0 today. And let's be fair, it could have been a lot more as well. We're going to talk about the result. We're going to talk about the performance, what this means for our season as well. But thank you very much, guys. So uh, being here, I appreciate it. And, uh, yeah, guys, you are all fantastic. You know, show can't be anything about you guys. So I do appreciate you all being here. I really, really do. Um, has anyone seen Liverpool and Atalanta's heat map tonight? Has anyone seen the heat map tonight between Liverpool and Atalanta? Oh, I'll get it up for you guys. This is the heat map. It's a very interesting heat map. I think you guys would be surprised and shocked by the heat map today between Atalanta and Liverpool. But here it is. So, yeah, there it is. Um, yeah, there's the, there's the heat map. Um, between Liverpool and Atalanta tonight. Uh, yeah, big up Troll Football, by the way, on Twitter, putting this out. Big up to them. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it's a. Uh, yeah, that's the heat map for Liverpool at Atalanta tonight. Pretty embarrassing. Pretty. <laughs> pretty embarrassing. Pretty embarrassing. Also, Liverpool's performance today summed up in two words. There you go. That's Liverpool's performance today summed up in one picture. Right. <laughs> right there. Liverpool's performance summed up in uh you know one beautiful one beautiful picture there. One beautiful picture. Um, my word, what happened to the Reds today? What happened to us guys? What happened to us? Look at that bedding, by the way. Whose bedding is that? Whose bedding is that? That's just not good, is it? That's just, that's, that's some, it looks like a mattress. I'm not sure what it is, but that bedding's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my word. Oh, my word. Let's have a laugh. You know what I'm saying? Let's have a laugh. Oh, God's sake. Liverpool's attack today summed up in a, a dance. <laughs> It's just all gone the pot, ain't it? It's it's all gone the pot. You can only but laugh. You can only but laugh. Oh dear man, it's it was awful. That is arguably the worst performance I've ever ever seen. Liverpool in Europe under Jurgen Klopp at home. Obviously, the away game to Napoli was another disastrous game. But this, this takes the biscuit. I ain't going to lie. This takes the absolute mick. It was a terrible performance. And we got everything. And we're going to talk about why this performance was so bad, guys. Why was this performance that bad today? And I, I don't know. I'm not going to try and be too negative. I, I've had my say on Frank's show today about things, but I don't want to be too negative because I want to talk about the positives of this season. But there is some things I think we need to talk about, seriously talk about. You know, a lot of people hide from certain subjects. They won't want to talk about it, but I'm not going to hide from these subjects. So 
I'm going to talk about it with you guys today, but I'm not going to try and go too over the top. Okay, guys, that's what I'm not going to try and do. I'm going to try and rein in a little bit because sometimes you guys tell me I'm overreacting a little bit or too over. So I'm going to try and re rein that back a little bit today and talk to you sensibly. Uh, but big up to everyone in chat. Don't forget, if you haven't hit that like button, hit, hit that thumb button. It's just below the video just there. Give the, uh, the video a like. It helps my uh, channel grow. The like is so important on YouTube, especially in the algorithm. More people get to see my uh, my videos, and uh, I'd appreciate it. Um, what's this? Uh, Lucas says, do not show vulgarity on this site. No needed hints. Very low likes. So show some class and some dignity. What are you chatting about, my friend? Please tell me what I showed that you didn't like. Oh, what that that so you're on about that. It's a bit of fun, mate. I'm making a light-hearted joke because we're terrible today. It's a bit of fun, my friend. Jesus wept. Appreciate you being here in your comments, my friend, but it's just a bit of a joke, it's a bit of a laugh. Um should have played Bradley, yeah. Uh yeah, but big up to you. Uh, can we? Can you believe Klopp said in his post-match presser, "I'd pick the same 11. I didn't watch the presser because I, I went. I went on Frank's show after, so I didn't see. As soon as the, I, I literally turned the game off, as soon as the whistle blown, and went into my office and went on Frank's show. So I didn't actually see anything. So, guys, any quotes coming out from Jurgen Klopp's presser tonight? Just put them like John's done. Put them in the live chat. Let's have a bit of fun and. Uh, Appreciate, it. yeah. Can you believe what Klopp said in the post match presser? He'd pick the same 11. Yeah, it, yeah, it's, uh, it's, it, it's, I'm not sure about that. Uh, serious confidence needed it had to be about Klopp's tenure at Liverpool. Uh, it was bigger than that. <laughs> uh, Daz, I, 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 I haven't downloaded them yet. I'll do it tomorrow, man, on tomorrow's show. Um, He didn't seem to. <laughs> um, uh, look, at it, it's 14 games now, about a clean sheet and 16 now. We're falling behind. In. Yeah, look, these things have to be spoke about, you know. These things do have to be spoke about. Uh, big up Russell says, Jamie, one win versus the top six sides this season. Uh, these players have been shocking versus teams on similar level to them all season. The last four weeks have uh, been due to a lack uh, due to luck, and this result has been coming. I agree. Uh, social joins, big up to you. Uh, this is why I hate the terms Prem Proven Farmers League. All this waffle, football's football. Anyone can get it. Big up to you, man. I totally agree. Uh, Jamie, I uh, said we needed a proper right wing back up this season in Jan. I said we needed a forward, and everyone laughed at me. Now you're right, Russell. Big up to you, man. You were right. Big up, Russell. Um, it's been coming. We're vulnerable in every game. Yep. Well, let's talk about that. Let's talk about the defence, man. Let's talk about the defence first. Liverpool defensively, for me, have not been that good for the last three seasons. I want you guys in the chat to, you know, get your comments in on this as well and your opinions on Liverpool's defence and why we concede so many goals. So many chances. Uh, this season, I will say this now, this season, apart from Man United, you know, and Man United are terrible, right? But let's take Man United out of this at the moment because how bad they are. Liverpool are the easiest big team to play in the Premier League, in my opinion. Man United are the easiest, but they're so bad it's laughable right now. Liverpool at least get results. But if we talk about Liverpool, Arsenal and Man City, Liverpool the easiest to play against. We give up a lot of chances and we don't defensively have any structure to our side at all. We are too, for me, too attack-minded as a team. I think all our players are so attack-minded. 
even Virgil and Canate. You see Canate, Canate coming out of the back four into midfield. I don't want Canate to do that. Just stay in the back four. We are so attack minded. You know, our full backs are attack minded. Everyone is really attack minded in our team. There's not a lot of defensive security in our shape. We don't have a defensive shape. And I don't know about you guys. It's that this this full back inverting thing has got to stop. It has to stop. Again, Joe Gomez is playing the inverted said uh, right back role today. Why why are we doing it? It leaves us so open. Why have we got Joe Gomez in the middle of our pitch, who is our right back, guys? Joe Gomez was playing right back today, and he's in the middle of the pitch on the edge of the box having 20-yard shots. Why? Why? Why are we having Joey G there? Joey Gomez, in this inverted role, gets forward more than Trent. He has more shots at goal than Trent does in a season since uh, Gomez is playing this inverted role. And it leaves us so much in behind work to do. You know, it's we have so much work to do on the defensive side of it. If you've got your right back is inverting like Gomez does, he inverts, then you're asking Canate and Virgil van Dijk to push really high up to the, you know, to squeeze your position. And then Simicas, I don't know what Simicas is doing. I have no idea what Simicas was doing. He was on some vengeance mission. He was up the other end of the pitch. And you wonder why we have no defensive structure. You're asking McAllister and Wataro Endo, uh, Endo, sorry, to do all the work. So Wataro Endo is there doing all the bloody work as a number six, trying to cover all the ground because he's got Gomez inverting in front of him, having shots of 20 yards. He's got Simicass on a jolly somewhere. I don't know where he's going. You've got Virgil today look shattered. I've never seen Virgil van Dijk look so slow in his running as he did today. Virgil looks so slow when he was running today. He looks so slow. You know, I, I, he's just... It, what was that bit when Virgil had all the time in the world and the player just took the ball off him? Uh, that don't happen. Yeah, the defensive structure of this team is... It's in a bit of a mess. We look a bit of a mess in, in, in a defensive structure right now. And we don't change the way we play ever. I'm all, I will play, I always praise, put praise where praise is due. What Jurgen Klopp's done this season with a rejuvenated midfield is really, is top draw. It really is. But we don't win when it matters. We don't win when it matters. And this is my problem. The Man United game, it mattered. The City game, it mattered. Tonight, it mattered. The FA Cup game, it mattered. The Arsenal game, we got beaten quite easily. It mattered. Why do we struggle winning the games that matter the most? Why do we? What, this is not me being a negative anything or being reactionary or anything like that. It's the fact that we don't win the games that matter. Why don't we win the games that matter? Look, the city game. There's things you can put into this as well. The players are at fault as well, and they are. The, we're going to get to the players, guys. Don't worry about that. We're going to tick off these players and have a real big chat about them tonight. But there's stuff in the way we built, the setup that we've got, the system that we play with right now. It's a tremendous system when it works. We are top second in the league on 71 points. I can't be too negative about it because it is working at the moment. But are we going to win the Premier League? Do you see us dropping points? We've got Fulham and Everton and West Ham to play away from home. Are we winning all three of them games? Is your is everyone's confidence at that level where we can say we're winning all these games? Because for me, 
I think we've got to win every Premier League game because I don't see Arsenal and Man City dropping too many points right now. Because especially with Arsenal, because they've got a good defensive structure. Man City have got quite an easy fixture list. Liverpool are easy to play against. Uh, let's put it this way. We played Sheffield United two weeks ago, yeah? We played Sheffield United two weeks ago. It was one all, yeah? For quite a bit of that game, it was one all at home against the worst Premier League time, arguably, of all time, yeah? It was one apiece at home. What did Sheffield United do? They made the substitution and went for it. They tried to attack us. They tried to score another goal. They were like, hang on, we can get in behind Liverpool here and get a second goal. Would Sheffield United think like that against Arsenal and City? Because we give them chances. It took a McAllister world-class goal to win that game for us. And then they opened up. We got another one. But in reality, it took McAllister a world-class individual strike to win that game for us. You could argue, I know it ended up 3-1 in the end, but you could argue we got a bit lucky in that because Sheffield United were coming at us. I think they missed a glorious chance when it was one all as well. When at the corner at the back post or something like that, they missed up. They hit the post or something, weren't it? We got lucky. It was... I, I just... We can't win 1-0, guys. Let me tell... Ask, I'll ask you in the chat, guys. Everyone in the chat. Does anyone in the chat think this Liverpool team right now, with the way we play, can win games 1-0 and see it out quite comfortably? Does anyone in the chat think we can be 1-0 up in a really comfortable game and see games out comfortably at 1-0 right now? That and that's an issue, and everyone says no chance. But look at the players we got. You're telling me that Canate and Virgil and Joe Gomez and Robbo and Connor Bradley and Trent and all that can't defend well enough to win us games one nil. Is it the players? Is it the players or is it the structure, guys? What is it? What are we talking about here now? Are we talking about our defensive structure as a system, as a setup, or is it the players? Is it the players or is it the structure? Because when we won the Premier League in the Champions League, our defence was pretty good. In fact, it was really good. Yeah. And we had. Matip and Robbo and Trent and Gomez and Virgil van Dijk. Not a lot has changed. Allison in goal. Not a lot has changed. Their defensive setup used to be better. The midfield used to be Henderson, Genie and Fabinho. That used to be the midfield. Henderson, Genie and Fabinho. Are you telling me the reason we can't defend now is because the midfield we got is not as good as Hendo, who none of us wanted, Genie, who some of us didn't want, and Fabinho. Is that the reason? Because the system hasn't changed. The tactics haven't really changed that much. We are a risk a reward team. We play a lot of risk in our game, a lot of reward. We've not really changed that much as a team. Do we have to change tactics sometimes? Or is it this, right? Or is it this, guys? Sometimes you can have a world-class rock and roll band, yeah? A world-class rock and roll band, right? They're the best band on the planet. Everyone loves their music. They sell millions and millions and millions of albums and records, yeah? They make... They're, multi-millionaires, they've made more money than you can imagine. They're the biggest rock and roll band in the world, yeah? But they fall out. But they start to fall out of each other. They start to fall out of each other. They don't want to see the sight of each other anymore. They don't want to listen to what the other person's saying anymore. They've had enough. 
Is that Liverpool Football Club right now? Are Liverpool Football Club this massive, world-class rock and roll band that just had enough of each other? Had enough of listening to the same voice? Had enough trying to do the same tactics? Had enough playing the same system? Is it that? It's, you know... I am describing the Beatles, yeah. That's pretty much who I'm describing right here. One of the greatest rock band, rock and roll bands of all time is not the best. And they all started hating each other and falling out of each other and were sick of the voice of, you know, John was sick of Paul's voice, Paul was sick of John's, everyone was sick of Ringo. You know, George was arguably the most talented per person in that band and got no respect. You know, and they was all starting to fall out of each other, but they made some of the greatest music that will stand the test of time. But, but eventually, they fell out of love with each other. Is that what's just happening at Liverpool Football Club right now? You know, Jurgen Klopp is this idol, this legend that we all love. Put him on a pedestal. It will always be spoke about in, as Liverpool fans. You know, we would talk about Jurgen Klopp to our grandkids. Our grandkids will learn about Jurgen Klopp, like a Bill Shankly sort of thing. But as if one, as if one just got... So used to the way Jurgen Klopp does things now, they're not, they're not doing the correct. They're not doing the the players are not doing the little things correctly anymore. You know they stop listening, and I'm not blaming Jurgen for this. By the way, I'm not coming at Jurgen for this. I, I'm looking at the players, and I, are they have they stopped listening? Have they stopped listening to Jurgen? Because when I watch Jurgen on the touchline, shouting and berating at the players, and going, "Why are you doing this?" Go, he's having a go at Joe Gomez today for having 27 30-yard shots. And Jürgen is going mad at him on the touchlines. But guess what? Joe Gomez keeps doing it. He keeps doing it time after time. He keeps having a shot. He's not listening to Jürgen. Jürgen's going mental at him. Stop shooting, you absolute idiot. You can't shoot. You couldn't hit water if you fell out of a boat. Stop shooting. But he don't listen. He keeps doing it and doing it and doing it. So the players, are they are they stopping? Are they not listening to him anymore? Is he not listening? You know, it, and that's why I don't always blame, I'm not going to blame Jurgen for everything. I'm looking at the players. I'm looking at the players for responsibility. Let's talk about players here. Let's talk about some players. Let's start with one that's going to really piss off the fan base right now. Right? And I'm going to talk about him. Darwin Nunes. Let's talk about Darwin Nunes. Now... We know Darwin is massively loved by this football club, and rightly so. I understand why everyone loves Darwin Nunes. I love Darwin Nunes. I love the effort he gives us. I love the energy he gives us. You know, it's you know, he gives us a hundred percent of what he can do every game, and that's all I ever ask for footballers. Head up, give us a hundred percent of your game, and he does that. But he's not clinical. He's not clinical. His chance today that he had, beautiful pass by Joe, uh, by Curtis Jones. An absolutely eye of the needle, beautiful pass into the feet of uh, Darwin Nunes, who, who kept himself onside beautifully, made a lovely run. The finish was appalling. Appalling. He's a good player. He's just not clinical. We need clinical forwards. The misses are starting to add up now. They're starting to add up. No, Darwin is not alone, by the way. I'm not going to single him out on his own. He's not alone on this. But Darwin cost us £85 million in total with add-ons. We bought Darwin Nunes to be our number nine, to be our main goal scorer. That's the point of buying Darwin Nunes. And let's be fair here, guys. Right? Let's be fair. Because I know a lot of people like Darwin. And as I said, I like Darwin as well. I do rate Darwin. I just don't think he's an elite finisher. 
All right. So please, no one get upset by what I'm saying. But if Darwin was playing for any other club, right? If Dark guys, if Darwin it was playing for Man United or Man City or Chelsea or anything like this, right? And he was missing these chances constantly. I can guarantee everyone in our fan base would laugh and point and go, ah, "What's that striker you got?" We would, won't we? That's not that's not pretend here. That's not that's not pretend we wouldn't, right? And as I say about Darwin, I think he's a good player. I like Darwin. He's just got no composure to be an elite finisher. And I think that is a fair comment. I don't think I'm insulting Darwin by making that comment. I think it's a very, very fair comment. He's a good player. He's got a lot about his game. He's just not got the composure to be an elite finisher. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with that. I think I'm being quite kind. You know, I think I'm being quite kind, don't you guys? Am I saying, look, everyone in the chat right now, am I saying anything that, that wrong about Darwin Nunes right now? Am I actually saying anything that wrong? Because I actually think he's a decent player who's got a lot about his game. He's just not got the composure of being an elite striker, an elite finisher. Is that a wrong comment to make or is it a fair comment? Let me know in the chat. Uh, big up to everyone here. Thank you very much. Guys, got over 200 people in the chat right now. Make sure you go and hit the fun button. Hit them likes. We're only on 55 likes, guys, and there's 207 people in the chat. Can we please get that up to 100 likes? And, uh, yeah, go and smash that fun button underneath the video right now. Let's try and get it to 100 likes, please. Got 200 of you beautiful people in here. And... Uh, yeah, let's get them likes up, man. Let's get them likes up. Let's get them likes up. Um, uh, Jamie ain't saying nothing wrong on Nunes, but speak. Of, oh, yeah, I'm going to speak on Salah. Don't worry about that. Uh, no, Jamie, you're right. No, you're being quite generous, actually. <laughs> That's Darwin. You're being generous. It's just... I like him. I, I I like Darwin because he's got aspects of his game that I enjoy and I like. Look, I can't ignore the fact that I think Darwin has got like 18 goals this season in all competitions or say like that, 17 goals in all competitions this season. So I can't ignore the fact that he has scored goals, you know, and he has got like 11 or 12 assists. So I can't ignore the fact that he has got goals and assists this season. And I'm not going to ignore the fact. But he's not an elite finisher when it matters. That's the issue I've got with it. He's not an elite finisher. If Jota had that chance today, Jota takes it around the goalkeeper and scores, in my opinion. In my opinion, Jota takes it around the goalkeeper and scores. Jota is a more clinical finisher than Darwin is, in my honest opinion, of what I've watched. But I like Darwin. I'm not going to sit here and completely destroy him. I like him. I actually think he'd do us more more good if he played left wing, in my honest opinion. I think I, I I literally think Darwin Nunes on the left wing with his pace, his athleticism, and he's actually a good passer. Darwin's actually quite a good passer of the football. That's why he's got assists. You know, Darwin on the left wing, I think, would be extremely dangerous. You know, play him out on the left, get him wide, use his pace, use his aggression. That's what his strengths, his pace and aggression are one of his strengths. Use them in them wide areas, especially the way we play. Especially the way we play. You know, we, we play on that. We want to play on that quick counter. We want to play and when we get the ball, quick transition, getting the ball into the wide areas with pace. We've got hardly any pace in our forward line if Darwin don't play. So this is the other thing. Because we've got no pace, Darwin sort of has to play because we've got no pace in the team without Darwin in there. who stretches the opposition. This is why I'm saying Darwin left wing, Jota through the middle and Mo through the right. You know, that works a little bit better. But then Diaz can't be dropped. 
So Klopp's got a, Klopp's got a decision to make, I think, in the next couple of weeks. You know, we've only got seven Premier League games left. And he's got a massive decision to make. Jota is back fit now, and he looks sharp. Jota looked really sharp when he came on. And Klopp's got a decision to make. Darwin keeps missing chances. He's missing crucial chances at crucial moments. Does, does Klopp keep with that? Diaz is in fine form at the moment, so you wouldn't drop Diaz. So Klopp's got some decisions to make. I wouldn't want to be Jürgen because there are decisions to make probably. But yeah, I, I just feel like... I, I just feel like Jota is the best finisher at our football club and for me he has to play. Yeah. I, I, I just think Jota's the most is the best finisher, guys. People might not like, like it. I just think Jota's the best finisher at our football club, getting back in the pitch. Um Mo Salah. Mr. Salah. King of Egypt. Mo 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 Mo. This is a difficult one with Mo, ain't it? Mo's looked off it lately. He has looked off it. Um, I don't know what's going on with Mo right now. I, I don't know where I stand with Mo. It's hard. Do you know what it is? And G's in the house. The big up G. Uh, this is G might know where I'm coming from here. But with Mo, it's difficult to talk about because of Mo's legacy and record at Liverpool Football Club. Mo's legacy and record at Liverpool Football Club is immense. What is he? Top five goal scorer, top six goal scorer of all time for Liverpool. He's, he's Liverpool's highest European goal scorer ever in European competition. Sorry. He, he's a tremendous player. You know, he's, he's a very, very good player. And But at this moment in time, I don't, I don't know if it's because of the injury. He hasn't played much. He's just going through it at the moment. But I don't know if he'll be here next season. And part of me, part of me is thinking, whatever new manager comes in in the summer, because I've got a really bad feeling it's going to be deserve Whatever manager now comes into the summer, Salah might not fit that new manager system. Yeah, I just, uh, big up to everyone's joining in the chat. Much love to all of you. I just, uh, I don't, what, you guys talk about him. What, what, do, what do we say about Salah? It's hard to criticise Mo. It's really, really hard to criticise Mo Salah because the legacy that he leaves at Liverpool Football Club, but, He winds me up. Let's put it that way. Right. Everyone in the chat right now, let me know what you feel about Mo Salah. Does, does, it, does Mo Salah wind you up like he winds me up at times? Because sometimes Mo looks world class and a cut above, and in other times he looks just damn awful. I don't know what we do with Mo. I, I, I really don't know what we do with Mo. He, he's a legend of the club. He always will be. For me, I'm going to say this right now so people don't have a go at me. He is Liverpool's best ever Premier League player. I'm going to put that out there right now. For me, Mo Salah in the time that he's been at Liverpool and what he's won at Liverpool and achieved at Liverpool Football Club and his stats of the position that he plays in, he is, for me, Liverpool's best ever Premier League player. So that's the highest honour I can give that man, but you can still critique him. You can still critique him at the same time. But personally, I, I just think at the moment he's got no rhythm because of the injuries. He hasn't played much in 2024, has he? Let's be fair. So I think the rhythm, not really match fitness at the moment, is going against him. But the problem is, I don't know if he'll be here next season. That's my only issue with it. Uh, let's get the Gang and Deep super chat. Big up, Gang and Deep. He says, and big up for the big super chat. He says, let's rip the band, uh, uh, let's lift the, 
I'm going to take it in his band-aid off. <laughs> we are, are we actually good under pressure? Every time we are in a pressure situation, we fall off. If season ends with League Cup equals failure, record books don't look at context. <sighs> I'm so bitter. Um, guys, let me know what you think about what Gangan Deep says here. Is Gangan Deep right? Are Liverpool any good under pressure? Do we fail under pressure? Do we fall short when we're under pressure? I tell you what, it's a heck of a... You might be right, man. You might be right. You might be right. Uh, Jay says uh, Salah is not the same player. He's in decline and there's no pace anymore. Yeah, that's what I keep saying. That's why Darwin, for me, has to play. Because if you look at, you know, Salah's still, it, Salah's not slow. Diaz is not slow. But they haven't got that running behind pace like Darwin Nunes has. And that's why I keep saying, no matter Darwin's poor finishing, he still, still has to play because he's the only player with real pace in that team. So, yeah. Right, I want to say, there's, some things I want to talk about as well that annoys me a little bit. That some things out there that do annoy me a little bit, I ain't gonna lie. This whole thing of like at the beginning of the season, so I heard Jurgen Klopp sort of talk about this today. I don't think he meant it in the way it was said or you know, in that actual quote, but I've heard people talk about this as well. I've heard a lot of people on social media. The last few hours, I've seen people on social media the last few weeks when we haven't been playing particularly well say the same thing as well. So at the beginning of the season, no one expected us to go in for a title run. I, take, I agree. At the beginning of the season, I was just looking for us to get back into the top four and regain Champions League football again and have a good summer transfer window. That was basically my outlook for the Premier League season. Now, that was at the beginning of the season. While the season's going on and you're doing much better than predicted, then for me, your mentality has to change with it. So at the beginning of the season, we sell our midfielders, we buy new midfielders in, we don't know how we're going to play. We just want to get back into the Champions League because we don't want to play Europa League football. We're too big for it. Let's get back into the Champions League. Uh, that's where the money is. That's where all the fame is, yeah? Let's get back into that, and then we'll go again the season after. That's what most of us thought, right, at the beginning of the season. Then the season goes on, and we're, like, doing well, and we're undefeated, and we're winning games of football, and we're still in all four competitions at the time, and, you know, we're pretty much at the top of the league for most of this season, you know? Most of this season, we've been at the top of the league. For me, your mentality has to change then. You have to adapt to the situation you're in. If you don't adapt to the situation you're in, you can fail. So you have to adapt. So as a fan, I've adapted my realisation on what Liverpool could do this season. Um, I, a couple of weeks ago, I was like, why can't we win the lot? You know, we've got this far now. Let's try and win everything we possibly can. Yeah? But I don't want to go to the end of the season. We only win a League Cup. And then people look back on the season and go, well, we shouldn't have been in the title picture anyway. Because then that's just failure. You're, 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 you're appreciating failure if you do that. If anyone at the end of the season looks back at this season and goes, oh, okay, all right, it is what it is. We did expect to win the Premier League anyway. And, you know, at least we won a cup. You're appreciating failure. I'm going to look back at this season and look at it as a massive missed opportunity if we don't win the league or get to Europa League final, at least. I'm going to look at it as a massive missed opportunity to do something really good when you had the chance. That's how I'm going to look at it. Now, I might just be different like that. I haven't seen you guys, what you're saying in the chat right now. I don't know how everyone in the chat feels. This is just me personally. 
I just, I, I just feel like where you are, where you are in the league, where we are in the league, we're doing so well. We're on 71 points in April. So we're doing tremendous. We're doing tremendous. Only two Premier League losses all season. We just lost our first home game in 12 months or something like that. So we're doing really well. If we only win the League Cup from here and we end the season finishing third place and only winning the League Cup, I will personally look back on it and go, it's a massive missed opportunity there. Massive missed opportunity because we was in for everything and we let it slip through our fingers. Why? Why did we let it slip through our fingers? See, that's just my mentality on it. I'm not going to look back on it and go, ah, it's all right, we shouldn't have been there anyway. Because that's not the, that's not the, that's not the, that's not how I feel. That's not how I think. No, I just think it'll be massive disappointment. Um, And if you think about it, if we finish this season off where we are now, if we finish off third place, and uh, and win the League Cup, then we did, we've done exactly the same as Man United last season, who we all laugh at. Just so, Man United did that last season, didn't they? Finish third and win a League Cup, and we all laughed at it when they said they were back. You know, they said they were back. They're going to go for the title the following season. We all laughed at it and go, shout out with your Mickey Mouse trophy. You know, the league was crap last year because Liverpool and Chelsea weren't about. That's what we all said. But then this season, we could end up third with a League Cup. But, it, it, and I'm not saying that's how people should feel. I'm just saying, like, that's my mentality. My mentality might be different to someone else's mentality. You know, it, it, we all think differently about football and the team we support and love. So, you know, everyone's got different thoughts and how they feel about the game and how they see things, and that's perfectly fine. Uh, please just don't come at me if I feel like that. That's all I'm going to say to you guys. Just don't come at me if I feel like if we finish third with the League Cup, I'm actually going to be a little bit disappointed. If that's the case, I'll be hugely upset and disappointed. But if I do a video on that, I don't want people coming at me for that because that's the way I feel. And no one should come to anyone else about the way they feel either. If someone feels like that's success and we didn't expect to be there, that's don't go at them either. You know, it, everyone's got their own feelings here. Everyone's got their own feelings here. Um, but I will look at this as a positive at the same time, guys. All right, I look at this as a positive at the same time. So some positives. We've had a lot of injuries this season. And to carry on, to be in the place where we are now with all them injuries, I think has to be praised. Not congratulated. You know, you shouldn't be congratulated for doing your job. But you're allowed to be praised. And... I think the team and the manager and the staff at the Liverpool Football Club dealing with all the injuries that we had and continuously fighting where we are now should be praised. Should be. There's no doubt about that. They, you know, shouldn't be congratulated because it's not a prize, but it should be praised for what they're doing. But then we always got to look at it as well. And it does look like the Atlanta shirt, don't it? But it's just, I don't know what it is. It's just a t-shirt um i i will look at it on another positive note as well is the other positive note on this is that we are on 71 points in the premier league right now on what the 12th of april as we speak liverpool have 71 points in the premier league they equal points of arsenal and one point above man city so Liverpool are very much still in his title run and his title picture and can still win the Premier League this season. Will they? I'm not totally sure they will. I think the result against Man United was really poor. 
we should have beaten Man United. And if we beat Man United, I'd actually, I'd actually be more in the realms that we could go and win the Premier League. But I just feel like it's it, it's going to be a challenge. But let's see how we go. I'm going to keep that as a positive thought there. For myself, anyway. You guys don't have to, but for myself, I'm still going to be positive. That, but weird things have happened. We could still go on and win the Premier League. Let's just see. Maybe Klopp, maybe Klopp threw this game under the bus on purpose. Let's <laughs> concentrate in Europe. Yeah, mate, who knows? Who knows? But that's the positive I'm going to keep there, man. That's the positive I'm going to keep there. You know, the Premier League is still in sight. That's not gone. That's still there to be won. You know, we'll go back to this Europa League game in a minute. But the Premier League is still there to be won, guys. Let's remember that. We are on 71 points, the same as Arsenal. We've got seven Premier League games to go. It is still there to be won. So I'll be positive about the Premier League race. Um, big up to uh, big up to the new member, Nicole, TT667. Big up to you. Thank you very much for coming. I uh, member, I really do appreciate that. It helps out the channel loads. Uh, really, really do appreciate it. Thank you very much. Welcome to the team. Welcome to the team. Um, yeah, I'm a little worried about the Crystal Palace game on Sunday because we got a. I don't know what the mentality of the boys is going to be like because that was a big beating tonight. This is a big beating. We got well beat, guys. You know. We put in no fight today. Was anyone shocked how flat we looked? We looked flat. Every single player looked like they had no energy. Like zero energy. Also, let me ask the chat. I'm going to talk to the chat right now. Just you guys in chat. I'm going to talk to you one-on-one -on -one right now. Was anyone shocked by the team that Jurgen Klopp put out today? Was anyone a bit shocked by the team that Jurgen Klopp put out today? Because let's remember, when we played, was it, who was it we played? Was it Lille in the last 16? Who was it we played in the last, Sparta Prague. When we played Sparta Prague in the last 16, we were 5-1 up. And in the second leg, he played a full-strength team. He, he played a stronger team in the Sparta Prague dead rubber game than he did today in the first leg of a quarter-final. So why? 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 Why was... Why was Canate rested against Man United but played today? Why didn't Conor Bradley get on the pitch at all today, by the way? What happened there? No Conor Bradley today. I think Conor Bradley would have been perfect with his high energy in this game. Yeah, I just Simicass. When like Simicass coming in that left back from absolutely nowhere. Like Gomez and Robbo pretty much been our left backs. And then Simicass comes in from nowhere to be left back. It's a it was a really, really random sort of call with Simicass that dog that has to be fair here. Simicass is dog poo. Like, it, it's just so bad. So bad. Uh, big up Scottish Bears, uh, coming a member as well. Appreciate the love. Thank you very much. And I agree with Nathan there as well. I'm not, I agree with Nathan there. The players' name were more capable of winning that game. I agree. I agree, Nathan. I agree with that. I just, I just get a bit sometimes confused with Klopp's decision making. Do you know what I mean? Sometimes, like. A dead rubber game against Slavia Prague when you're 5-1 up. He went stronger in that game than he probably did in this game today. Do you know? It, and I'm not saying, but that team should have still been enough to beat them. But the problem is, we had no pace in that team. And if you know where to play Atalanta, you got you need pace on the counter-attack against Atalanta. If you've got pace on the counter-attack against Atalanta, you got to win that game quite comfortably. But he played Harvey Elliott and Cody Gakpo in the wide areas. So Cody Gakpo and Harvey Elliott wanted to drop deep all the time. I thought Cody Gakpo actually played all right today. But most of Cody Gakpo's play was in midfield. He was dropping deep into the midfield area. 
and picking up the ball in the midfield area. Harvey Elliott was trying to get on the ball a bit and do his thing. But we had no pace in the wide areas. And this Atlanta team, if you play proper pace against them on that counter-attack, they can't live with you. That's how you beat them. But we played two of our slowest wingers in today's game. That was what the weird thing to me was. Be like Colin as well, member as well. Appreciate it, love, guys. Everyone okay, and members, and that really helps out the club. Uh, helps out the club. Helps out the channel. Appreciate it, man. Um, and again, like I said, I thought Gakpo was good today. I know a lot of people didn't like Gakpo, but I thought Gakpo was actually all right today. I, I thought he played well. Um, The finishing is so crap, though. Now, I can't blame Klopp for the finishing. Do you know what I mean? I can't go and blame the manager for Darwin Nunes not to be able to hit a barn door. You know, Mo Salah not to be able to stay on side. You know, these sort of things, I can't blame the manager for that. That's down on the players. I can't blame Klopp for Sabozlai barely being able to pass a football and then give up possession, and they go and score a third. No, that's I can't I can't blame Jurgen for that. He's not going to Dominic. Right, Don. When I put you on the pitch, mate, this is what I want you to do: get on the pitch, and uh, you know how they talk hand hand in front of their mouth like that. So, Dom, here's what I want you to do: I want you to go on the pitch. Yeah, right. When you get on the pitch, I want you to give away the ball as much as you can. Dom's probably looking at clock going, "You sure, boss? Yeah, 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 yeah." Get on the pitch. Yeah, fuck them up. They won't understand it. They won't realise it. Get on the pitch and just give away the ball constantly. Yeah. Unless Klopp's telling Dominic Sabozlai that, unless Klopp's actually telling Sabozlai to do that, I can't really blame. Uh, I can't really blame Klopp for it. Really, really can't. Um, big up Scottish Bear as well. I don't know if I said big up to you. Big up, man. Appreciate it. Um. So yeah, that, I, I can't blame the manager for telling for players going out there, professional footballers going out there and going, right, we're just going to give the ball away. You know, that's down to the players. The players' mentality, you know, they lack today, and that's something our club usually has. Mentality-wise, we always look as our mentality is usually better than everyone's. You know, could do any, but our men, them players' mentalities today, they weren't there. Now, this could have been, this arguably could be Jurgen Klopp's last European game at Anfield, guys. And the players would have known that today. And it's like they didn't fight for him. It's like their mentality weren't there to play today. You know, they were smiling when they missed chances. They were smiling when they were giving away the ball at times. It was a really weird performance. It really was. Big up, Daz. Big up, Darren. I've been a while with man. I hope you're doing well, Darren. I hope you're doing well, my friend. Uh, Jamie, we look mentality, uh, mentally and physically tanked. Yeah, that's what I said, man. Uh, let's start to a game plan. We didn't seem to have one exactly. Our game plan was, I don't know what our game plan was today. And that's what I said earlier as well about the mentality side of it. And physically, we look shattered, which is always worrying how tired we constantly look all the time. You know, uh, big up Jamie says, I might be being optimistic, but if we take our chances in the away league, we might still have a chance in the fixture. And this is what I want to talk about about the away fixture as well. So it wouldn't go, it wouldn't, I wouldn't um, be shocked if Liverpool went and won 4 0 in, in Italy, by the way. It wouldn't shock me at all if Liverpool next week turned up to Italy and win 4 0 at Atalanta. It wouldn't shock me. But the problem is, to Liverpool to go and win 4-0 in Atalanta next week, guys, you would have to put in so much effort to win that game, it'd be exhausting. And then a few days later, we play our way to Fulham. And we could easily drop points in that Fulham game because they're tired. Because Jurgen Klopp would have to go full strength. If Jurgen Klopp feels like his Liverpool team can come back in this, he will have to go full strength can't rest anyone full strength go and win the game 
if they did, it would take so much out of them, it would exhaust them. It would tire them out. And then playing Fulham a few days later would be an extremely difficult game away from home. That's why this first leg was so important to win. That's why this first leg was so, so important to win because of that. And the team looked gassed now. Why did the team look gassed? Why do our players always look so tired? Yeah, it could be, man. Yeah, we got goose up. Why do we look so tired? Yeah, we did. You know, was it? Uh, was that Jota's hat trick? That beautiful hat trick that Jota scored. Yeah, maybe Jota can come back and do the same. Yeah, look, I personally think like we're out of Europe. I'd be shocked if we go to Italy, keep a clean sheet, and score four goals. I'd be absolutely shocked if we did that. But I won't put it past them. But personally, I think Atalanta has dumped us out of Europe tonight, in my honest opinion. And that's a sad thing to think, because that was Jurgen Klopp's last European game at Anfield, was that disgusting performance. It's a shame. Hopefully, fingers crossed, but the effort this club, this team is going to put in to beat Atalanta next week could then be a hindrance on our Premier League game with Fulham a few days later. It, it should have been the other way around. It should have been the other way around. But look, why are the players tired, guys? Why are these players constantly tired? What's making them so tired? Or... Like, I look at Arsenal. Arsenal barely rotate. They don't rotate a heck of a lot. Saliba plays most weeks. Gabriel, if he's not injured, plays most weeks. Ben White, if he's not injured, probably plays all the time. Odegaard, if he's not injured, probably plays all the time. Declan Rice, I don't think, missed a game for Arsenal. Saka's played like three years in a row. Yeah. Majority of the players play a lot all the time. And Arsenal look fresh. Arsenal look fresh. City's players look fresh. Why does McAllister look knackered? You know, Tyro Endo and McAllister look, shouldn't look shattered. Why do they look shattered? Why do we always rotate our centre-backs? Now, Virgil looks knackered. Canate, you know, Canate's barely played. He looked absolutely shattered. Got no energy. Got absolutely no energy at the moment. And I don't know what it is. It's either... the, the it, I'll tell you what it is. It's either motivation. They've got a lack of motivation for some reason. I can't understand why it'd be that. But they've either got a lack of motivation. Two. Or they're just shattered. Look. The way Jurgen Klopp plays is very tiring. We all know this. He's been our manager for now for nine seasons. We all understand the way Jurgen plays and the way he sets up. It's extremely tiring on players. You know, Klopp's even mentioned it himself before. You know, the way we play so offensively forward. You know, you know, you're asking everyone to press forward consistently for 90 minutes every game. You know, no dropping back, no sitting back and defending, no resting on the ball. It's 100 miles an hour constantly, every single game. You know, that's with the ball and without the ball. And eventually that takes its toll. Look at the injuries he's had. Look at the recovery from injuries. You know, people come back from injury. They get re-injured again. Then recovery takes even longer. We miss star players. Players start to look tired when we get to about April. We look a bit shattered. We look lethargic. And it's just not tonight either. Our performances against Sheffield United, our two performances against Man United in the FA Cup, and our Man United performance yet last week as well. So it's not just tonight. It, it, it's been there the last few weeks. It's been there the last few weeks. They look, they look dead on their feet at the moment. And with the injuries as well that we've had, a lot of these players have had to play more minutes than they probably should have as well. You know, a lot of these players have probably had to play a lot more minutes than they should have. And it's taken them out of them. 
<laughs> Big up Liverpool 67. I think I see you DM me as well, by the way. I'll, I'll look at that in a minute. Uh, Big up Richie with a super chat from earlier. Uh, we look like a mid-table team. We certainly did today, man. Appreciate the super chat. But look, we've got players coming back today as well. We've got players coming back and yeah. I, I we've got Trent who didn't come on today, but we've got Jota is back now, Trent's back, Addison probably be back next week or so. Uh Stefan Batetic was on the bench today. You know, so we've got fit players coming, we've got players going, Graham Burks is back. So we've got players coming back, but we've got to start. Like I, I hope Klopp lets them give them a day off from training. Give them a day off from training and let them come back the following week. The following day, sorry. Not the week. Let them come back the following day. Let the players rest a bit because... Because such an important game against Crystal Palace on Sunday. Crystal Palace is massive now to our season. Absolutely huge for our season is this um, uh, Crystal Palace game on Sunday. Because if we, win, if we beat Crystal Palace, guys, we're sitting here on like, what is it, 74 points? And we're looking a bit more like, well, okay, the Premier League is still there. Anything but a win on Sunday and it's over in my opinion. Anything but a win on Sunday and the league for me is probably over, especially if City and Arsenal win. If them two win and we don't beat, ever, uh, don't beat Crystal Palace, I, I think it's probably over. So the players probably think that. Klopp probably thinks that. So that's a lot of pressure for the boys now in the Crystal Palace game. A lot of pressure. And Crystal Palace used to be a bit of a bogey team, man. Used to be a bogey team. So we it's a big it's a big game, Sunday. It's a poxy huge game. Absolutely massive. Absolutely massive. Crystal Palace result is our season now, guys. It really is. Sunday is our season. We go look at it on Sunday and go, right. That's our season now. Everything's on it. Everything's on the line. Because if Arsenal, Man United, Man City win their games, and that, uh, do they play before us as well? Does anyone know? Does anyone know if they play before us as well? Let me have a look. Do they play before us. What are we doing for likes anyway? Before I look at that, what are we doing for likes around here? Uh, we are 84 likes. So we've got 228 people in the house, guys. What's going on? Let's get to 100 likes quickly. Um, guys, that thumb button underneath the video is free to press. You'll see a little thumb button there, a white thumb button, yeah? Go and press it. It's free to do. doesn't cost you a thing. takes a second to do. And uh, it gets the likes up, guys. So if you've not done that so far, could you please go and press that thumb button? It just helps the videos, guys. You probably don't realise how much like buttons help uh, channels grow. Really do. The algorithm kicks in while we're live. More people see the video. So, yeah, please, if you've not hit that like button yet, please go and smash it. I'd appreciate it. Uh, Arsenal just play. Uh, so, Arsenal are the game after us Sunday. Let me, let me have a look. 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 It's going to Premier League Webby site. Uh, have a look here. Uh, do, 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 do. Fixtures, fixtures. So, Saturday, early kickoffs, Newcastle, Tottenham. Uh, where are we here? Where are we? Where? So, Manchester City play Saturday at home to Luton. So, that's 7 0. So City are going to win their game. So they're going to go above us. And Arsenal play Sunday at 4.30 at home to Aston Villa. So the Sun the Liverpool game's a big game against Palace then. Because City are going to probably beat Luton at home by quite a big score margin. So Liverpool will have to win that Palace game. 
And then that puts a bit of pressure on Arsenal, who play after us. So, so it, this Palace game's huge, guys. It really, really is. It's bloody huge. You know, let's just hope we get stuck into this Palace team and put all our frustrations out on them and everyone everyone bloody finds their finishing boots. That'd be nice, wouldn't it? You know, everyone finds their finishing boots at the Palace game. It'd be beautiful, yeah? Be absolutely beautiful. <laughs> Just go, win that Palace game and we'll feel a bit better, I reckon. We need to win that Palace game and feel a bit better. Um, Kelleher. Kelleher made a couple of mistakes today. Uh, also, he saved a beautiful one with his face. <laughs> that was a beautiful save, by the way. Again, why two minutes into the game, two minutes, that's all it was, guys, two minutes at home at Atalant Atalanta, have a chance right in front of our goal and should have scored if it was not for a quality save from Kelleher when it hit him right in the eye and it went over the bar. But why have Atlanta got a chance to score two minutes at Anfield? That's Why? Why is that happening? Defensively, it's a joke. Um, I feel for Quiven Kelleher. I'm going to say it right now. I feel for Kelleher. He's got us out of a lot of trouble. Um, He's obviously not Alison Becker. I don't think he's a bad guy. I think he's a good goalkeeper, uh, Kelleher. But how, many, how much can you do when your defence just opens the gates up and lets everyone in? Like, we literally open up the gates and let everybody in. What do you want, Kelleher? No, he's going he's, he's, he's to he's spill something at the end of the day. Some are going to go in. What it shows me is how good Alison Becker is. I think that's what it shows me because when Alison Becker's in goal, we have more clean sheets, yeah? But our defence is exactly the same. Think about that, guys. Our defence is exactly the same, but when Alison Becker's in goal, we have more clean sheets. That's how good Alison Becker is in goal because Kelleher's not a bad keeper. He's a good goalkeeper. But it just shows you the levels that Alison Becker's at. Shows you the levels that Virgil van Dijk and Alison Becker save in our games. Because everyone gets a chance against us. We open up like anything, guys. You know, we open up. You know, yeah, just go for it. Yeah, go. This way, guys. This way. Yeah, back it in. Back it in. No. So, if we have Virgil and Alison in our defence, how many goals would we concede this season? So yeah, I, I feel for I feel for Keller a bit. Good goalkeeper, but uh, Addison just shows he's how good he is, man. Um, last time we kept the clean sheet was against Nottingham Forest a month ago. That's mad, ain't it? Big up to our friend there. Big up to you, man. That's just absolutely. Uh, it just shows how good. Alison Beck is just class, man. It just shows the difference, man. Um, Alice, Alison's injury has been a bit concerning, though, because I believe Kelleher's played more games than Alison now this season, which is absolutely mad. Uh, but we need Alison back. Uh, Cody Gakpo. I thought Cody Gakpo. I know Cody's been getting some stick. He gets a lot of stick, sometimes rightfully so. But I tell you what, I think Cody's got to keep the stubble. Do you know what I mean? I don't want to see no more clean-shaven Cody Gakpo. Since Cody Gakpo, the last couple of games, has had a bit of stubble. You know, he's had a bit of stubble beard, yeah? He's growing that beard through. He's played better. So anyone who knows Cody Gakpo, tell him not to shave. Because since he's been growing his beard out, He's playing a little bit better. So we need Cody Gakpo not to shave. You know, <laughs> yeah, we need we need Cody not to shave. I thought Cody was good today. I thought Cody Gakpo was winning the ball back in the midfield area really well. He was driving with the ball quite well. He was running with the ball really well. You know, he was trying to get, the, he was trying to get passes out to the attackers. At least there was some effort from Cody against, you know, everyone else who's just dog crap. So, yeah, I, I thought Cody was all right, man. 
I, I, I thought, yeah, see, I, <laughs> AA says, Jamie, I'm dying because I've, I thought the same thing. That's it. Cody, just keep the, keep the stubble. Grow that beard out. He seemed to be playing better. He looks more aggressive. I don't know what it is, but Cody Gakpo looks more aggressive with the bit of beard grow out. Yeah. He looks a little bit, he looks a little bit more aggressive for some reason. So, yeah, Cody, keep it, man. Yeah, exactly. They're pull 67. Yeah, bang on, man. It isn't sustainable when you're solely relying on a goalkeeper. Facts. Facts. Absolute facts. But, yeah, uh, uh, anyone who knows Cody Gakpo, tell him not to shave. You know, you know, tell him not to shave. Uh, fair play, Cody worked hard, but once again, not one shot of goal. I don't think it, that's his game, though, Colin. Look where Cody picks the ball up a lot. You know, a lot of the time he's picking up the ball in the halfway line dr dr and driving with the ball from the midfield area. I think that's what he's told to do. You know, he did. No, he was meant to play left wing today. Did Cody look like a left winger today? He never kept width once. It looked like the game plan, the instruction for Cody was to come deep, win the ball back, pick the ball up in deep areas and run with it. And if that was the instruction, you know, I don't, you know, big up the scraps, they do well. A bit sluggish off the ball. He's not been as sluggish with the beard, though, Scottish Bear. I will say that. Since the beard's grown through, he doesn't seem as sluggish. I'm telling you, the Saint do this. The Saint do this. Do you remember when Shabby Alonso got even better when he grew a beard out? And he kept it for the rest of his career. You know, Alonso grew his beard out. Do you remember when he first came to Liverpool, clean-shaven, yeah? And then, like, two seasons later, he started to grow his beard out. And once he grew his beard out and Alonso had a beard, who came calling for him? Real Madrid, yeah? And he kept the beard till he retired. He's still got the beard now. I'm telling you, the beard is what makes you. <laughs> so, the beard made Alonso. The beard will make Gakpo. That's what I'm saying. Gakpo's got to keep that beard, man. He's got to keep that beard. <laughs> it's beard magic. Exactly. Big up, hey, uh, HK. Big up to you, man. <laughs> um... Uh, Luis Diaz, man. Luis Diaz. Is it me or is Luis Diaz not very good when he comes on as a substitute? Or is that just me? I'm 87% beard now. <laughs> the bearded wonder. Um, but <laughs> what was I just saying? Uh, Luis Diaz. I don't know what it is about Luis Diaz, man, but I don't know. I, I, I literally don't know what it is. I, I think Diaz is far better when he starts. And scraps, he's not very good when he starts either. He, he, he just don't look like an impact substitute to me. I think Jota's a better impact sub. I think Jota, I think Jota looked quite good when he came on compared to Diaz. But Diaz has to start games for me. I think he's more impressive when he starts. So uh, when he uh, when he comes off the, uh, on as a sub. I want to ask everyone a question right now. I need someone to answer me this because I'm not sure what the answer is. But why did uh, why did Harvey Elliott and Curtis Jones go off at half time? Why why did Curtis Jones and Harvey Elliott go off at half time? I, I didn't get that. I thought Harvey Elliott was doing all right. If anything, he should have brought Salah on and put Harvey Elliott into midfield, and not just take him off for Salah. Like bring Salah on, but put Harvey Elliott in midfield. I thought Harvey did all right. I thought Curtis Jones was doing all right as well. I don't get why they came off. You know, because what did Sabozla do, man? Uh, Beat Selection says uh, uh, Gakpo dropped deep because we could not uh, get out of their press, so we needed a ball carrier to get us uh, upfield because we had no solutions to beat a man to press. Yeah, exactly. And that's what Cody's good at doing selection. I keep saying about this about Cody. That's why I think Cody can be a midfielder. People keep going at me at this. But if you look at Cody's game, he's very good in that midfield area at protecting the ball, driving with the ball, and carrying the ball. Who does that? Who's meant to do that for us right now? 
Ryan Gravenberch. We bought Ryan Gravenberch, yeah? That's his skill set, protecting and carrying the ball. Cody does that better. Tell you, I, 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 I tell you, people might not like, I think Cody Gakpo will be a midfielder for Liverpool, uh, one day in his career. Maybe not at Liverpool, but I think one day in his career, I can see Cody Gakpo uh, as, a, as a midfielder. But big up selection. He was the best at it as well. Not one else in our midfield could do it. Um, yeah, the subs the subs were complete W word. They were. Um, Jamie, what's your front three for the Palace game? I've got Gakpo, Jotter, and Diaz. Um, Jotter definitely. I'd have Jota Diaz and Salah probably. Yeah, I'd probably go Jota Diaz and Salah. Jota Diaz and Salah. I, I think Darwin needs to be taken out of the team for a little bit. Harvey is a better impact sub, but I didn't think he did much wrong in that first half. Like literally, he almost scored a wonder goal, by the way. You know, he was very unlucky there. Actually hit the crossbar and then hit the post. He was extremely unlucky with that effort. Um, he was pressing. He was do he, when he got hold of the ball, he's trying to work it. I, 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 the Harvey sub, I can understand maybe Curtis Jones going off. Although Curtis Jones did play that beautiful pass to Darwin Nunes, where Darwin Nunes only need to, go, need to go around the keeper and score, and then and then Curtis Jones has got a beautiful assister to his game. But the Harvey one. I don't get why Harvey was... I, I really don't understand why Harvey was taken off. I, I really don't get it. Big up my man. Uh, Gakpo was the best player. I thought he was today as well. Uh, Klopp always hooks off easy options in the youngsters, Elliot and Jones. Another reason why Klopp is getting on my nerves recently. I hear it. Uh, Jamie Edwards is scouting Somerville from Leeds. He's a good player, man. I really rate him. He's good. Archie Gray as well. Um... <laughs> Fair enough, man. Fair enough, Skulls. Fair enough. Um... Uh, Shadow striker selection. Yeah. Shout. Shout. That freer roll. I'll get you. I'll get you. Yeah, Wataro looks shattered. He has so much work to do. Can you imagine being a DM in Liverpool? Can you imagine having to be a DM playing for Liverpool when you see your right fullback running past you? You look over that way and you see your left fullback running past you and you look next to you and you see Canate and Virgil van Dijk. You're like, but guys, if the ball goes over my head, we're in trouble. You know, people actually like getting defensive situations. So, yeah. That's why Fabinho's legs were gone last year at the age of 30. He's like done, you know, because you have to carry so much ground as a DM for Liverpool. It's absolutely nuts. It's absolutely nuts. So, yeah, Otaro looks shattered. I wouldn't be surprised if Otaro doesn't play against Palace and McAllister goes into the six against Crystal Palace and he plays Curtis Jones and uh, Sabozla in the midfield. Like he did to start the season, McAllister supports like Curtis Jones. I wouldn't be surprised that's the midfield against Palace. Otaro looked absolutely knackered. Uh, it's still worth going to Spurs and West Ham team beating us for the and getting draws. God, I hope not. Uh, man, I left work early and rescheduled an appointment for that. <laughs> Imagine how gutted the folk that travelled to see Anfield European night felt. Yeah, man, it's just... Oh. Uh, Klopp always too frantic. That's our biggest issue, in my opinion. Entertain the masses too much. I agree. Uh, Maka should be... Uh, sh uh, sh Maka might be shattered now. Just played full 90. It's a thing, man, but I, I, I don't know if Mac could be dropped and Endo dropped at the same time in our midfield right now. That's the right. problem there. So we're going to end on this, guys. We're going to end on this. What's up with the atmosphere? So today, I said this on Frank's show earlier, that 
the atmosphere was dead. For a European night at Anfield, the atmosphere was dead. Now, we know the protest has happened, the spoiling of the cop and the uh, spirit, uh, spirit of Shankly. Them groups decided amongst themselves, without asking any, how any other Liverpool fans felt, decided against themselves to protest about the 2% hike in standard tickets going up for next season. Now, I said time and time again that I understand protests and everyone's will, everyone's free to protest. If you want to protest, go for it. Protest. But pick your time and place, man. That was a European night. And I understand everyone saying things are too expensive now. Life's too expensive. If we don't protest this 2% increase next year, it'll be 4%. A year after that, it'll be 7%. A year after that, it'll be 10%. The year after that, it'll be 12%. And no one can afford to go. I get it. I understand everyone's point on this protest about tickets. I really do. But I've done my research on this ticket stuff. For a standard ticket, Liverpool still have one of the cheapest tickets in the Premier League. Villa, Aston Villa have more expensive tickets than Liverpool that are not, you know, executive or anything like that tickets, just standard tickets. You know, the dearest standard ticket at Aston Villa is like 80 quid. It... So I understand what they're saying, but what happened tonight, if you watch the game at the beginning, there's no atmosphere. European nights at Anfield, flags, scarves, banners, you know, the, the music, the songs, the sing-alongs, it builds the atmosphere. And, yeah, it was just... It, I think it killed the it killed the atmosphere a little bit for me because I just feel it killed the atmosphere a little bit. It made it a bit soulless. I ain't gonna lie, it made it a bit soulless. Now, the people that are doing this protest have said today, this is what Anfield will continue looking like if we keep going up with, you know, season ticket uh, with ticket prices we, we will keep protesting this this is what Anfield will look like soulless basically do you want Anfield to be soulless now I get what they're trying to achieve and I understand what they get I understand everything they are saying but tickets I don't know what the outcome for this is because we're a self-sustainable football club if we're a self-sustainable football club then things like tickets and that have to go up in price if all that money's going to go back into the football club to buy footballers, to give footballers big wages and stuff like that. You know, people wanted Mo Salah to stay last season, yeah? He's on 350 grand a week. You know, that comes from the club because we're self-sustainable, you know, through ticket prices, through merchandise, through commercial revenue, all this sort of stuff. Now, also, they argue that you know you could sell, you could sell tickets to like twenty and thirty quid, and you'd still get high revenue and high commercial revenue because of the size of Liverpool Football Club. I get that you can, but if people are willing to buy the ticket and go to the ground, and Anfield still sells out sixty thousand every week and people are willing to pay 40 and 50 pound a ticket and you have higher revenue then you then you have more money to spend there's a tricky one i get everyone's opinion on it i sort of feel like it killed the stadium today and killed the atmosphere and i don't think they consult with anyone either like no one from spirit of shankly got in touch with me did anyone from the spirit of Shankly get in touch with anyone in the chat about tickets and that today and protesting? Did they talk for you? They don't talk for me. They, they don't talk for me. I'm my own person. I just... I, 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 I just... Now, obviously, the atmosphere's not got nothing to do with the performance, but we've seen this team 
guys, we've got to remember this. We have seen this team have lackluster performances and then the atmosphere in the stadium picks them up and makes them play even better. Klopp talks about atmosphere all the time. Klopp always talks in a press conference, we need Liverpool tomorrow. This is what he says. We need Liverpool tomorrow. We need Anfield tomorrow. They're as important as the players. We need Anfield tomorrow. The reason he says that is because it gives the players a, a, a lift. It does something to these players that just lifts them up and makes them achieve more than they should do. But when you take that atmosphere away, it can have, it can have, uh, it, it can help the opposition out having a poor atmosphere. It, it just, yeah, it's, it's just. Uh, I, I, I can understand what they're doing. I get what they're doing. And they have done some good stuff. I ain't going to pretend they haven't, like, freezing the away tickets at 30 quid and stuff like that. Their work on that has been tremendous. And I condemn I condemn them. I congratulate them for that. I congratulate them for the, some of the work they have done behind the scenes and some of the work they have done, especially Spirit Shank. They've done some amazing work. But... If you want to support a self-sustaining model, which they do, they support FSG. They support FSG's sustainable model. They do, right? So if you support you support that sustainable model, a 2% increase on tickets in six years. So in six years, for the last six years, there's only been a 2% increase in tickets. That is so below inflation. But if you want to be a sustainable model, then why are you protesting against that? I don't get it a bit. I don't really understand it personally, but and that's just me. That's just me. But I'm not going to blame the atmosphere on tonight. I just feel like it's it's sad when you see a very quiet Anfield in European nights. Do you know what I mean? But I can't I can't blame the atmosphere on on our performance. Do you know what I mean? That was the players and the manager. That was all down to them today. But on a European night, on a quarter final of a first leg in Europe, you know, it was just sad to see from my point of view. Yeah. You know, you know, it, it's just sad to see. Yeah, everything's inflation, but I think the 2% is even below inflation, isn't it, HK? I, I, I'm not quite sure on it, but I just, I think someone said it was below inflation. I'm not sure. Yeah, you do need to involve COVID. But I swear Tottenham and Chelsea are hiking theirs up by 12%, aren't they? Or am I wrong there? I swear I read somewhere that Tottenham and Chelsea are hiking up their prices by 12%. I mean, that's scandalous. I'd be with, like... If if I found out Liverpool go hike it up by twelve percent, then I'd be right with them. When Liverpool tried to make it a seventy-seven pound ticket, and Spirit Shankly Group and Spoiling Cop Group and all that got together and walked out Anfield on the seventy-seventh minute and made it empty, I agreed with them because that's ridiculous. You can't go from like thirty, forty quid tickets to seventy-seven pound tickets. That's just greed, pure greed. That's all that is. That's mad. And I backed them on that one. And they did well because they froze the ticket for like two or three years, didn't they? So the tickets were frozen. And I'll back them on that. But if you're going to be if you're going to back a sustainable model in FSG, which they do, you're gonna to have to expect some increase in revenue somewhere. It's got to come from somewhere. Do you know what I mean? Big up, Frank. Everything's being blamed on Putin. <laughs> <Just blame it. laughs> oh, oh, big up, man. Yeah, we have, man. Uh, Arsenal, two of it. That's just mad. A 12% increase is absolutely nuts. Absolutely enough. Yeah. Look. I believe the spirit of Shankly guys, I can't talk for them. I can only go what I've read on social media with their social media posts. But I believe they were against 
state ownership at Liverpool, yeah? They were against it, right? Because of the human rights and all this sort of stuff they were mentioning at the time. But if you're against that, right, if you're against having state ownership at Liverpool because of the pol politics behind it and human rights and whatever you want to talk about behind it, right, you can't then back a sustainable model and then have a go at the team, you, the owners that you back being a sustainable model, hiking up tickets by 2%, which is like a pound 10. So you, you, that don't make sense to me. That don't make sense to me personally. Don't make no sense to me. But as I said, as I said they have done some great things. The, the away cap for it, the away ticket freezes and things like that. And then them stopping the 77 pound tickets and all that. So they've done great things. I'm going to diss them like that. I just don't understand their, so they look a bit flip floppy at times. They look a bit flip floppy. Um, but guys, yeah, big up to everyone. Thank you for joining me. Do appreciate it. It's so late. It's like quarter past two in the morning. Uh, been a great show, guys. Really do appreciate all the love today. Um, I will be back on Saturday, guys. Yeah, I'll be back on Saturday. Um, yeah, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Enjoy your days tomorrow, guys. Enjoy your Friday. And I'll see you Saturday, guys, to the build up the Crystal Palace. Much love to all of you. Thank you for joining me. I'll see you again soon. Bye bye for now.